In this video, we'll consider the top of the view range. Now I'm back in the diagram from the help file and we've been talking about the primary view range, item number five, and item five is bound by item one, the top at the top edge, and item three, the bottom at the bottom edge, and then of course item two is the cut plane slicing through all of the geometry. So the portion of the view range that we wanna talk about here in this movie is the zone between items one and two, what I'm calling the top of the view range. So I'm in a Revit file where I have both a floor plan open on the left and a section open on the right. And over here in the section view, I have that generic model view range graphic that I've used in previous videos. It has the green dashed line here to represent where the cut line is and the red dashed line to represent the top. And I'm shading in, in this greenish color, the top of the view range area. And when you consider that area that's shaded, it's very clear that things like this piece of cabinetry right here and these windows over here are completely within that top of view range. Other elements like this box window here and the microwave and the fire extinguisher cabinet are partially within that zone. And then of course, items like the countertop and the furniture are outside of that zone below the cut plane. Now, because the primary range is still in play here, we are seeing things like the furniture and the countertop over here in the floor plan because the rule says, you know, if you're from bottom to cut plane, then it will display. What specifically do the rules say, though, about objects within this zone? Well, you may recall that if any part of the element intersects the zone, then it's eligible to display. So that's true, certainly, of these two elements here, which occur in the lower portion of the view range. But what would happen if I took this fire extinguisher cabinet here and actually moved it up so that it was completely within the top portion of the view range? So just come over here to the elevation parameter and just change it to something. I'll put in five feet or if you're working in metric, 1500 millimeters. Now, when I apply that, the fire extinguisher cabinet moves up on the wall and is now completely within the top portion of the view range, but notice that it disappears in plan. So similar to the concept that we talked about in a previous video, where the category determines the cutability of an element, the category also determines whether or not an element will display in this upper portion of the view range. And it turns out there's only three categories that are eligible to display within that range. And they are casework, windows, and generic models. Now, I don't have a generic model displayed on screen, but I do have a casework and a window. Now, the casework is pretty obvious because we can see it very clearly there in the floor plan, and it's very clearly here above the cut but below the top. The window, not so much. When I select the window, it does appear to highlight something over here. Let me go ahead and deselect it, kind of pan over, and notice that the window is actually there. The issue is just simply that there are no graphics set to display that object. So there's really two things going on here. The category determines if the element will display in that zone above the cut, but the family itself determines how. So in the case of this casework family, the fact that it's showing up as a dashed line is actually being determined by the family itself. And the fact that this window displays nothing unless you highlight and select it is also being determined by the family itself. So if there was some graphic we wanted this window to display when it was displayed in floor plans, we could draw that in directly in the family. Okay, but because there's no graphic drawn in for this family, it's not displaying anything at all. So for example, if I changed it to one of these windows, well, this window clearly pops out of the thickness of the wall. We would probably want something to display if we were using that kind of window over here. So if I just come over here and I select this window and I change it to one of those box bay windows, now you're gonna see it display in the floor plan even though it's above the cut plane. And that's because the window category is eligible to display in that zone. But the casework is still a little unclear, right? Now, if I take this piece of casework, let me slide it over here. And what I'm trying to do is clear it past this countertop. So now that I've got it over here, if I drop it down so that it actually goes into the primary cut range, it still displays, of course, but it displays still as a dashed line. So this is why I'm telling you that 
it's actually the family that determines how it displays, not anything about the view range. So because wall-mounted cabinetry most of the time will be mounted at a height above the cut plane, it was safe to build the family with a dashed line representation. But of course, if you need the family to appear below the cut as well, then you'd have to approach it a little differently. Let me undo that a couple times. And let me open up the lower floor plan. And right here is another piece of casework. Now that's a tall cabinet and you can see it right here. Now that tall cabinet at the moment is well below that top of view range, which is why over here in the middle level floor plan, we're not seeing it appear over here. But if I were to select this and let's just move it up to about five feet, that pushes it up into this top portion of the view range, and then it begins to display. Now, you may be thinking, well, it's solid because it's still below the cut. So, okay, let's just make sure. Let's move it up to 11 feet, about 3,300 millimeters. And notice that it's unchanged in the way it displays here. It still displays as a solid. So, in other words, whomever built the family for the tall cabinet said the tall cabinet needs to display as a solid line in plan because it's actually intersecting the cut, whereas the wall-mounted one needs to display as a dashed line. So all the category is really doing is allowing it to display in this upper range, but it really is the family that's determining the how. Now, another example of the family determining the how is this item right here. This is a light fixture. And I told you that the three categories that can display above the cut but below top are casework, generic model, and windows. Well, a light fixture is not one of those three categories. So how is it that a light fixture that's mounted right there, clearly above this cut range, can still display in the floor plans? Well, if you investigate just a little more carefully and kind of move your mouse here and notice that it actually highlights an edge that goes all the way down to the bottom of this level. The trick is that if I select this item, edit the family, there's actually an invisible line in this family that intersects the cut plane. So if you ever have an item that's not one of those three categories and you want it to display above the cut plane anyway, then this is the trick that you employ. You open up the family, you draw a vertical line set to the invisible lines subcategory. And then when you load that into the project, that invisible line will intersect the cut plane and force the object to display. Now, if I were to remove this invisible line and load it back into my project, overwrite the existing version, and then that kind of dropped it down right there. So let me just take both of these and move them up back to where they were. So let's move them back up over there, or maybe they were about five feet. Anyway, they're still above the cut plane. Notice that if I go back to the floor plan, they no longer display. So the trick is to put this invisible line within the family, and that forces it to intersect the cut plane, and therefore it behaves like any other element, like the microwave or the fire extinguisher cabinet did, where they're partially intersecting that view range. So... Casework, generic models, and windows will automatically trigger display in that above view range from the point above the cut plane to the top. Any other element, you have to employ this invisible line trick if you want them to display. As far as how they display graphically, dashed line, solid line, that's determined by the family itself.